Okay, so today I'm going to show you guys how to convert your Steven Slate drums MIDI tracks into separate audio tracks for each part of the, the kit, the kick, snare, toms, hi-hats, uh, cymbals, etc. The energy room and the Steven Slate drum room also. So the first thing you have to do is have your, your contact player set up um, for multiple stereo outs. So in this case we've got a contact 3.5 player set up to be a multi-output 16 stereo tracks. Um, I've already got that set up. So with that, once when you're in contact then, you can set up your outputs and we're going to basically go from these outputs here at the bottom in the mixer part of contact and route those through some aux channels in logic and then send them to a set of buses and then go from the bus to an actual audio uh, track and record your drums to an actual audio tracks. So first things first, you want to set up your outputs in contact. Um, first and foremost, I like to label mine. I generally will use a kick, snare, tom one, tom two, tom three, uh, use hats, ride, crash one, crash two. Uh, I've got one I won't use here and then I've got the energy room and then the Steven Slate drum room set up also. Those can be uh, manually configured here. If we click on this um, comp button here at the bottom, we'll see the channel name is kick. You can call it whatever you want, but it's going to be two audio channels, and it's going to be plug in out one and plug in out two. You can change those to anything. They generally will go in order. This would be one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven, eight, and they're in groups of two there. So I'm going to leave that is that as it is because I want my kick to be on one and two and then my snare is actually going to be on 3 and 4 tom 1 is going to be on 5 and 6 tom 2 is 7 8 tom 3 is on 9 and 10 the hats are on 11 and 12 the rides 13 14 15 16 for crash 1 17 18 for crash 2 and then I'm, I got the one I'm not using energy rooms on 19 20 and then Steven Slate drum room is on 21 22 so I've got that all set up already you might have to set that up yourself the next thing though you want to make sure is that your actual drum itself or cymbal is going to the correct output so right here the kick is set to go to the kick output the snare is going to the snare output and then the same thing with all the rest of my um, individual drums tom one is going to tom one tom two will go to the tom two output tom three to the tom three output hats to the hats output ride etc um, all the way through um, your room so basically whatever these are set to be on down here in the mixer or where, or where those are going to go so I have 19, 20 and 21, 22 for the rooms so if I play the MIDI track we'll see um, you'll see there at the bottom every time it's the kicks hit it shows up here in the kick output and everything so I'm going to move that out of the way for a second and we're going to go back into logic and now what we're going to do is go to the mixer and we have our instrument right here um, and we're going to make an additional 10 aux channels for this instrument um, because we're going to use 11 in all but the first one will act as the first one so that this instrument one right here will actually turn out to be contact um, output one and two so we'll make 10 more of these so we have 11 now total and if we click here and hold we'll see 3 and 4 5 and 6 7 and 8 all the way up to 21 and 22 the next thing that we need to do once you have all those set up you so you have 11 stereo channels here going from one uh, plug in one and two for the outs, three and four, five and six, seven and eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one and twenty-two. Those are all going out. But we're gonna send those to um, each individual um, instance here, we're gonna send to its own separate bus. So we will actually start with the kick here is gonna go to bus one. And you'll see a bus created over here, or a new aux, aux channel there. And we'll send this to bus two, etc. 
I've already got this set up all the way through so we're gonna switch over to that so here we have all those set up so we have all those instances of the contact player here going to bus 1, bus 2, bus 3, bus 4, bus 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, etc. And then those all show up over here. I've already relabeled them um, to match up. So I have kick, snare, tom 1, tom 2, tom 3, hats, ride, crash 1, crash 2, energy room, and SSD room. So I have 11 buses um, that I'm, I'm going to, I'm using my output here to go to specific buses. So these buses are all set up now. So what I can do now is create audio ch uh, channels for all these buses to feed into, which will then be able to dump our, the drum tracks as an audio file. So we'll go back to the range window, go up here, we're going to create 11 new tracks, audio tracks, we're going to make sure that, make that they're in stereo. For our input, we're going to actually go from a bus input, so we'll start with bus 1, we're going to go all the way through bus 11, so we will click ascending here and it'll automatically do it for us. I'm going to set the output as my stereo output, and I'm going to record and enable them. So I'll create those. They'll show up right here. I can go back in real quick and relabel these. So I know exactly what channel or what audio is going to what. And this all matches up with my outputs in logic or in contact. Crash 2, energy, SSD room. So I have those 12 audio channels set up. If I hit play for on the on the MIDI track that's already there. see that they're showing up there in the audio tracks now because they're being fed by the bus input. So all we have to do then is go back to this. We're going to go in here and make sure that um, that metronome is turned off. It is. And we're going to hit record and we'll dump all the individual snare, kick, toms, the cymbals, etc. into their separate audio tracks so we can either mix them or send them to somebody else to mix or uh, make other adjustments to them. So we'll just hit record. those symbols ring out there and I'll stop go back we have all of our audio tracks um, are now separate so we can do whatever we need to do with those in the end um, you can actually delete the instrument track now because you no longer need it um, I always keep a backup of that in case I need to go back and make any changes to uh, my settings in contact um, say I want to change the energy um, room amount on a specific drum. I can go back and do that later if I need to. Um, so I always save an extra an extra copy of this as it is. And that's how you take your MIDI tracks and dump them down into audio tracks in Logic.